Iconic and not ironic at all, Goldshire Studios. It's going to be energy by the looks of things here. If I mean, if the name's in red, they might be on the attacking side. Yes, that's correct. It's a good inference, and now I have proof to back it up. So, Seagull on the Hanzo here as well. Gold's on the Roadhog to come in. And we see on the side of Snake, actually, Key going to be going for the May. Um, and Meng Mao on the Reaper, so... I kind of want to fight up close and personal. The problem is, Meng Mao's going to have such a tough time on Reaper when Seagull can get so much information for his team. And I actually, I don't even... Okay, I do see on the screen, he's on towards the far side, he's over towards the left, which I don't think you're going to Sonic Arrow that side, so you actually might have an opportunity to pick up a kill, but you have to be so careful, because if you get poked in like that, you will have your teammate, that could be the death of him! The shield though, towards Punga as well, not only protects him, gives Snake a good amount of charge, he's fully charged up here on that particle cannon, this is going to hurt, now Ning now gets it towards the backside here, Punga going to fall down first, and there's a dig, but picks off Snake, so that answer already coming into effect, it was 700 to fall down, so normally a bit of a flex DPS player, but that roll now with Ming Mao in this particular case, Milo coming forward here as well, you can hear the nano boost already coming out, it was so early on here, the energy just bustled away on towards the point and take it for themselves very early. Getting a very quick hold here and even still take it down Ming Mao as he's just trying to come in the last second. So first attack successful, took a little bit of time because they were going very slow about it. But they got nonetheless. And now Snake, I don't think they're even having an opportunity to contest in this corner because energy not losing a single man as they pushed in to be able to shove them back. So this will force Snake either go onto the high ground or continue to fight on the ground, which I don't think is necessarily where you want to be. When the Graviton Surge, Dragon Strike combo is about to be available. There's also this comp for them as well. I mean, maybe a May is something you can put up highs and Yadda possibly, but Snake probably have to commit to sort of playing the low ground here. They can use Ming Mao to harass. He switched over towards the Winston away. That's good, that's good. So this is what we wanted to see before, right? Jump on top of the Hanzo with the Winston and then pressure him. The problem is, if there's any high ground involved, Seagull can just climb up the wall and get away from you if you're Winston. So you have to be very careful where you choose to attack and jump onto the back line like this be perfect. Yeah, I'm going to go from here. Seagull has to back away, but going low, and that's just for the Dr. Ward. And he won't have enough damage to deal with Ming Mao, and that's perfect. Off the back of the Graviton Surge, we can see Snake stabilize here. Punk A even getting involved in that fight, and 700 just with the extra damage and the initial Graviton off the back. But Energy don't use any of their ults there as well, so they draw a little bit out of Snake here, and they've got a decent Wombo to come back in with themselves. Yeah. They've got six ults. But Snake adapting where Vici didn't, not switching over to Winston to jump into the back line. They let Seagull play Hanzo pretty much the entirety of their attacking phase. But like you said, they have six ultimates up. One Graviton Surge could spell disaster for Snake. They have to be so careful to back away. And there it is. The combo comes through. The Maywall is going to do absolutely nothing to this. And they're going to take down one kill finally. Yeah, so the, we did see the transcendence in that fight. There was healing available, and the sound barrier was being used there. So, yeah, I mean, it was just burning, a matter of burning through those defensive ultimates now. But Seagull left with his own devices. Still being threatened a little bit by Ming Mao, but it was more than just Seagull to deal with the Winston diving in. He was overextended. And the sound barrier out of Pooks actually yeah. I, I gave Seagull a lot of HP. So you can for, uh, afford to fight him head to toe. Or Toe to toe, head to toe, this makes sense. Head to toe to fight him in his face. Um, but energy's gonna tune this presence. Again, they're gonna have a lot of information from Seagull with the Sonic arrow being thrown in. And they know exactly the route that's coming through. So this three tank setup is working for, for Snake for a little bit. The problem is they don't have an Ana, which can be so impactful when you can throw a Winston in or even um, even your Reinhardt. Yeah, your Reinhardt. Your, tri yeah, triple tank, no Ana's interesting here. It's not the first time we've seen this. A fight wants to play this in the other instead of the Ana. We don't really know if we can say that this is a failing of theirs yet. I'm not really sure, but... And there's Fate. He picks up Gods there as well. He's a very, very good Zinjana. We saw multiple kills coming from him. Dragon Strike comes through here. 700 avoids the bulk of the damage and goes what? around How the side. How did he escape? Punk still forced that one now as well. Transcendence in over the top. 700 goes into pressure. Urshana comes down. It's going to be Milo frozen stiff. Seagull gets caught up with this one here as well. This could be nasty for energy as Fate yet again gets himself another kill over the back with the Biotic Grenade keeping energy just on their feet, but not for much longer. Seagull had about 10 HP and yet he still survived with the Biotic Grenade and the healing out of out of Dummy there. So this is a, maybe a little bit of a misstep out of, uh, out of Snake, but now energy switching things up, getting rid of the Roadhog, putting him over to a Reaper. All right, so they have Seagull switching from the Hansa to Mei, Gods from the Roadhog over to Reaper to deal with uh, kind of the upfront, uh, the up close and personal fighting, which done with the Nano Boost available and Enigma with Grouch on Surge can easily force a fight here that I don't think Snake can really contest without any ultimates. And of course, lack of mana is always a Forget bit of the elevator. Fact. Let's yeah. use May. That's good. I mean, you want the high May ground, right? This is the best yeah, way to yeah, do yeah. it. That's kind of. We're going to work on that one. Yeah, we'll get it by the end of it. Uh, that was a sleep dart. That was connecting on towards the right hand there as well. I think it was Punk A putting the sleep there. Nicely done. Graviton comes in here, but energy lacking a bit of follow up there. There is, of course, going to be a nano boost. Is that a Reaper in there? It's got to be God's getting himself too. Seagull with a wall off in towards the jail. This is going to isolate Punk A now as well. And oh, energy can just collapse on him. Not enough follow up at all towards that Earth Shadow there. A little bit used cheaply by Punk A. So what point in bringing that ult there was? Yeah, I mean, if he hit the entire team, it could have been a decent amount. The problem is, you can see where the respawns in of his team are, and they're just nowhere near to really help out. And Energy more than happy to continue to push through a great wall from Seagull. Actually blocks him off so they can't escape this one. Blizzard's available. Goss picks up another kill, and 
Ravage's sake, they're just being walked over. They're being forced to slither their way back into their own spawn. And that's why I like the pickup of the wall, or the, the main here as well, for the wall. Because as well on the Wild West stage, but also here, you can isolate that single player normally in a pinch, right? Sometimes you can't block them completely from getting back to their team, but you can sort of delay them long enough that you can pick them off while they're in clear sight. Gods is in the perfect position for this as well. Oh, Dummy there. Will, very, will very, very soon have his mana boost available. So it may not matter if they know that he's going to be here. It's going to have to be fake. Popping that transcendence very quickly. And this is the response. Actually going to push through with the speed boost out of Lusu just to make sure God's is effective here. The problem is he's going to fall down immediately. The Blitz is going to come in and freeze up quite a few people. Seagull gets himself a double kill looking for a triple as Milo's being pressured in the back. Yeah, and Enigma going to be helping out Seagull. There is all between them. They get four. Milo, yeah, I mean, he's going down, but he's just the bait. It's all a bit of a ruse here. Snake committing so many resources to killing a Reinhardt, while they get completely crunched between the combo of Enigma and Seagull, and energy just pushing straight on through here. Desperation needs to be a factor for Snake now to stop this payload. Trying to warm off towards the right side. They have an Earth Shatter. They have, as well as a Nano Boost. They're going to use it momentarily. They're waiting for the Transcendence to actually finish off as the Earth Shatter does hit, but Seagull's not able to burst anyone down. Just trying to build some overset, but God's going to be there. Popping the blender on top of the ground with the Surge. Only picks up one, but they've done the damage. Yeah, Fate, of course, with that Transcendence earlier on the fight. There's not a lot coming away from the Reaper Cop here in 700, just trying to keep that one contested, keeping himself out of harm's way. Dummy comes in actually with the dart to take down 700, and Seagull's trying to back away. He can see the attempt from Key to keep him for the rest of his teammates is going to fail, but Dummy is caught in the heel by an ice spike from Key. So they held on here, Snake. Well done by them. Key again with a great wall just to stop the retreat in there. But even a good Graviton Surge at 700 to stop Gods from doing some serious work with that. Uh, that Death Blossom being up. But he switched out over to McCree. Let's look for a little bit more extra damage. He's sitting towards the backside because Dummy... Well, he's not being pressured onto. There's no Winston, there's no Genji, there's no Tracer. There's gonna nothing help. to deal with the back line of energy. And with the aim we can actually see Gods have, he's going to be more than happy with this. going to help him with pick is there as well. If Seagull gets that wall down, Gods can obviously get a little bit easier from long range to pick off that target that's isolated. Now Seagull in from the side as well. We're going to have Blizzards from both sides, but that's the Graviton Surge combining with it quite nicely. Soundberry oh. doesn't come out for Snake here, but it's getting chilly up for this one. All four of them frozen together on the point here, but the follow-up damage is not going to be there because Meng Mao's already in the backline. Milo gets himself three all on his own. That's pretty darn impressive, but now Meng Mao has to back away and desperately try to get himself a hold pack. 700 tries to stay alive, and Meng Mao's knocked out away. Milo doesn't have time for your Reaper ult. He's not impressed. And with 40 seconds left to go, it looks like they're going to cross the finish line. 45 seconds on the board. Snake held longer than Vici Gaming did when it came to attacking your energy. But that's still a finish. That's a completion nonetheless. And that's still time left on the board, which is a good sign for them. But now they have to look towards the attack where they really struggle when it comes to hybrid maps, attacking, and even defending they struggle with. The last points that they've been able to do on Kingdra before, that's their, that's their playground. That's where they can really hold on and put up a good defense. So let's talk back a little bit here, Jason, to the, that last little point, I guess, where energy had to push back through. We saw God switch over towards the Reaper. Seagull, of course, still on that main, which he picked up from the sort of Wild West stage. A, it gives you good flexibility in positioning there as well. You don't have to wait for the elevator RNG, which is a big complaint of a lot of players on this map, by the way. Uh, get the high ground and work their way back in. Well, the the McCrees the McCrees which there for Gods, do you really find that to be, you know, the, a big deal? Do you think it was just a, maybe a small detail there? I still I think it's a big deal. I think the I, I, problem is in the game we can't see the damage he did. Like you, you can't see the assist he's been able to pull off, right? But the fact that him and Dummy weren't being pressured in the back. Like they literally were not being attacked towards the back, so there was nothing to get there besides Meng now drops on top of them, uh, for the most part to really deal with them. So if you're in the back like that getting so much free damage in, so much free healing in. You're putting a lot of extra pressure, and you don't necessarily need those three tanks when you have a Mei who can walk into the team to prevent damage, also act as a tank so you can heal yourself, and you still have your Zarya and your uh, Ryan parts to be protective and to just soak a lot of damage. Is that a problem when you do run Mei with maybe three tanks that you don't have the ability to dive the enemy backline and maybe kill with their Anna or something like that? Is that, like, is that a limitation of the you know, tank stack? I, I think, yeah. I mean, like, well, who would, who would be the one to go into there? You don't have anything that pairs. Uh, with diving comps anymore. Like, nothing really good to pair with diving comps since you have the, the, the rise of Ana, I guess, when it comes to Nana Boost. Uh, but the problem is, it's both ways, right? So you have energy who can't get to the back line. The problem is for Snake, though, is because they're held so far back in this position, their back line becomes their front line, technically, or their middle line, right? Um, because you're not able to hold up as far as necessarily that you need to. So both teams kind of can struggle in that situation, depending on where the payload is. But now we're seeing Snake on the attack. And we're seeing, well, we're seeing no fair, but they're still sticking with the Mei on key. Yeah, so they got the, yeah, interestingly enough, they've got the Ana here for fight, and then they're going to go with the Mei and the Reaper combo. So just a simple tank here for the Ana involved. I mean, energy as well. No surprise here to see triple tank Seagull on the Mei here on the defensive side. Wall comes up. 
it closes off like the majority of the air, as you can see. It leaves like a small avenue, but more importantly, it's delaying as well, so it allows uh, oh. energy some time to actually get set up. But that was a good sleep down to the top. That's big. Gods now can't get involved in this fight. That must be the starter's pistol here for Snake to try and go and make something happen here. Wall comes up, that Seagull just trying to knock them back, and now Gods has woken up and he's seen, well, a lot of easy targets from the backside here. Snake kind of forgot about Gods while they put him to bed, and now Gods able to do so much free damage from the back here, just lay it in. But that's the Earth Shadow coming in here for Pange. What can he get? Just the charge in towards Seagull. Gods able to recover quickly enough to get the hook and get the finish there with the shotgun to the face. Not to mention, all this extra healing they're able to do. My gods, he's missing 200 HP, but he's <laughs> healing himself. You're gonna get dummy to get the extra healing on top of him. And you also have the Earth Shatter for Milo. So you have an Earth Shatter, you're gonna have Nano Boost into the next fight. You're gonna have the Whole Hog and even a Graviton Surge. Like, the damage... That energy, or the, uh, the damage energy was able to do was focused mostly on their tanks, and they're able to build up so much overset from this, which is going to make them even harder to push when it comes to this next point. Bionic Grenade comes in there from Dummy as well, and you can see maybe even Nano Boost available. Yeah, he's going to get the one going. That's probably Mama going in. Oh, it's nasty. It's going to be the Blizzard on top of the Graviton Surge here. Energy throwing the Kitchen Sink and the rest at Snake. A lot of ultimates being used there as well, but this is crucial time being built up by energy. They're making Snake desperate. Than prone to so, making a few mistakes, but again, that's a lot of ults used. This is something we saw during the World Cup qualifiers that we were doing out of Team Finland. Uh, actually, it was Linkser who was playing the Reinhardt, and all he would have to do actually, was, I think it was Nox, sorry, I think it was France. Uh, Nox, all you had to do is basically get Nano boosted, he swings away, gets an Earth Shatter, saves Earth Shatter for the next fight, and during that, Time of using the Urshan in the next fight, it bought no, the time no, for no, Nanaboost no, 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 to come back up no. again. And that's what they did. Lilo, he used Urshan in that last fight. He's at 78, 80% right now already again. Gods gets caught out trying to take control of the high ground. Now the Graviton Surge is going to come in, but Milo's shield is dutifully being kept upright and in the way. They're going to try and go for the back line and find Dummy, but 700 gets a bit bored of going for that one. He leaves Ming Mao to deal with the Anna comfortably enough, and now it comes back in and joins the rest of his team. Seagull, very, very low, going to fall now. Pook's not far behind. He drops. It's going to be unique when the last man standing here can only do so much damage and they can't even get a kill on towards Snake. Won't slow them down too much. They have six men on the point, and it's ticking away. This should be a comfortable tank, and we're going to be into the streets phase. Credit to Milo there, especially for the fact that he's not feeding a lot of uh, energy over to 700. You saw in that attack when he was trying to go head-to-head -head against Dummy, he had zero energy. Uh, and that's basically like one of your guaranteed ways to build up solid energy as a Zarya is, is, is an Earth, or fire strike. Every single time you see it, you shield yourself or shield teammate, they get hit with it, boom, 50 energy. And they're preventing a lot of control for him, a lot of damage that he can do. And this is a really good support energy charging straight forward. See what the Blizzard leads the way. Fake is completely wrecked there as well. It's going to be a spike towards the dome to clean him up. And now, well, it's going to be a similar fake for, uh, for Zaya there as well. But interestingly enough, King and Pangay deal with the rest of... That's a bit rude. <laughs> that's a bit rude. <laughs> they use their own main wall to get oh over the top. Oh my gosh, that is And they know he's so dead, rude. but he's stalling for time here. He's going to fall. But this is about time for energy to get back out of spawn to get onto his high ground. Which is what they need as well. They won't get on top of the general store here as we're going to see Ming Mao early go up there. But energy, will they wait for the elevator? Probably not now. If Ming Mao positions himself menacingly enough towards the saloon, uh, the roof of the saloon, I don't think energy going to go for it. They probably don't feel like they have the time. So They backed off though. Gods. Gods came up the elevator and started popping some shots off of him. I would have too, but now the Nanaboos come in there. That was actually on towards the Nico in that fight. He gets knocked to the ground instantly here. Milo doesn't have the uh, Nano Boost to benefit from here, but he's still able to do a bit of damage. He will be frozen though in a moment. I think he was just inside the radius of that blizzard, which is very, very big, of course. Well, like 10 meters as it is now. And Gods, he's not, you know, McCree, not super self sufficient. Often needs to be present with the rest of his team. Definitely not a 1v6, so he has to back away from that fight completely. And again, Seagull, just doing the deed. Again, Wall comes up here, he eventually falls. Doesn't elect to use the wizard there as well, so he hangs on to that one here. And Energy probably want to regroup for one more big fight outside of the studios here, but a few of these ults have managed to accrue over this very interesting streaks well, phase. Nano boost to Death Blossom. That's what we're going to see here probably out of Meng Mao. But Gods has to be quick on that flashbang to prevent him from really getting the full channel of that one off. But they look at that, they have a Zarya on top of the jail! They're able to boost up 700 there to get a lot more control as well as Minion has switched over to the Tracer. But there's the engage coming in. That's there's Die 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 and able to pick up one kill. That's a miscommunication though. Ming Mao didn't want to go for that fight, but he took damage from the Tracer up above and had to commit to the fight. And that's sort of a bit of a waste of ults here. It's not quite working out for Snake, who ideally would have liked to have sat back and given Ming Mao the time to choose his engagement. But he gets threatened up top by Enigma, forced to jump down, and for some reason Fate thinks that's the opening and says, alright, let's go for it. A 60 health. Uh, Rigby goes in with the Death Blossom and the Nano Boost and doesn't get much for it. Well, just and the Nigma, one kill. If I remember correctly, he actually went up the elevator too. Yes, that's so why. it took that's him a lot of extra time up. for him to, to get to that position and then it scared off Ming Mao to force him to drop down and that's... Wasted ults. Yeah, a little bit fortunate for them. But they have a minute 20 left so they have some time to, to actually push with. Problem is energy is sitting around the point and you can see no one has high ground control of the snake so they're very uh, conscientious, of, uh, conscientious of what's going to be up there. 
Enigma. Pulse Bomb comes in. That's going to force his opponent out of position. Fate just has to quickly sidestep the one and avoid the damage coming in. Now Enigma has to sit towards the back. There's going to be a Sound Barrier coming out here for Snake. And that's the only ult they're going to have to use here. No, Graviton Surge comes online. They're also going to have a Blizzard. That's perfect for Snake. A good combo. It should be good enough here. But no, from up above, it's going to be Gods descending down. Shots in towards the Dome of Pungay. Eventually finishing him off with the Flashbang. That might be enough now. 47 seconds and the team kill gong rings out. Snake had a lot of ultimates, but they used them just as they came up. They didn't really have a chance to set them up. It was a key just ulting immediately. As soon as 700 got the Graviton Surge, he just lays it down. Again, not getting much value out of these, Jason. problem is right now, with Snake having so little time left, they have no ability to check the high ground, to at least get control of that one before going for the next fight. So if God stayed there, there would have been really no chance for Snake to dislodge him from this position. And then boom, Data comes in, we Nana boosted as well, and Snake gets wiped out here. They have no ultimates to work with. They have a Winston now that they switched over to. But what are they going to accomplish on this final attack? Well, Milo just looking to charge up his ultimate here and get towards the back line. Fate can't do much about it here. He's going to try and charge out. Milo actually escapes alive, and now he's going to get healed up. That's a very effective foray into the back lines of Snake. And now he's going to go for the fire strike here. Extra damage being put down on the direction of uh, Peng, uh, Pange, sorry. And he does get picked up. Blizzard in just for good effect now, and we do go in towards the overtime. It's energy, a strong showing here. Snake uh, prevented from finishing the map there. A good hold in the street space. Alright, so you have to wonder how would that have played out differently if the name didn't catch up Meg Mao on the high ground on the Reaper? If they did, if they got the attack they wanted to, they would have captured the second point. Like they would post it up. There least, was no chance. At least that second point there. And energy was more than happy to stick onto the solo tank. Like, when was the last time we've had solo tank be a thing, right? I mean, I like it though, it's because it's off the back of, well, to be fair, I think it's a bit of a confidence to play again, but Nick was crazy that was really important to be picked up here his Seagull as well. Just had a few interesting, uh, Look at that smile on his face. Yeah, he's not really I can't even see his arms moving. He must have really high sensitivity.